Hey guys, come on in the room. Come on in the room. I am Ms. Gigi with Game Changers. How are you today? We're going to be talking about child care food program, free grant money. Go get that free money. If you're unfamiliar with a child care food program, uh, just let me tell you a little bit about it. It happens it's on the federal level. So it's in every state, in every county, you have access to these funds. It does not matter. Let me repeat that. It does not matter how many children you have in your care. You can have one child in your care and have access to this free grant money. You can have 25, 100, 300. It does not matter the number of children you have. It is very easy to apply. It is very easy, great, great money to have supplement income, supplement money to have incoming into your daycare every month. And you get a check every single month. So let's talk about it. The first thing you need to do to get a part of this program, and again, it does not matter if you're in an apartment, it does not matter if you're in a group home, it does not matter if you're in your home doing daycare, or if you have a center. It does not matter. It does not matter if you have one, two, three, four, five, six kids. It does not matter. Your own children can go into this program and you can get reimbursed funds for their food. It is called the Child and Adult Food Program. Google that. And let me actually put it up for you guys. It's called the Child and Adult Food Food program. This is what you're going to Google to find out where it is in your state and who to contact. Now, let me tell you a little bit about how it's set up, and then we'll get into exactly what all they do because they actually do a lot. So, how it's set up is that in most cities, if you're living in a big city, they would usually involve a third party. So when you actually Google this information, it's going to give you the state um, website for the children and adult food program. When you call that number, find out if they have you going through a third person or if you can just sign up directly through them. You really want to use that third person if that third person is allowable in your county. So this is someone who has actually got their 5013C, their nonprofit, and they are in charge of collecting the information and distributing the funds every month. If you're in, in Nashville, Tennessee, uh, Bountiful Baskets is one of the most amazing ones. I've been working with them for years um, and a lot of them do get in trouble. Sometimes they get in trouble mismanaging money. And sometimes they get in trouble because there are a lot of people who are fraudulent when it comes to this because this money is so free and clear. So basically what it entails is that, and again, you can have one child. It doesn't matter. And it can be your own children or your own grandchildren or your nieces and nephews. Um, so it is basically a grant program that's set up. It's just like the food program or the grant for the food program that's set up in Metro schools, Head Starts, and, and most state pre preschools. So depending on the number of children you have, once you get the application and once you sign up and you become a provider, a provider, you do not have to be licensed. Some require you to be licensed. Uh, well, let me just say this. None of them require you to be licensed, okay? But if you don't have a license, you, in some states, you cannot claim no more than four children on your program, okay? And that's including your own. Well, actually, four total. In some states, you can uh, include four that are not yours and then add yours on so it would be six or seven. But so depending on which state you're in, sometimes you can claim more than four. Uh, and then sometimes you can actually claim even six or seven being non-licensed. Now, 
And don't get me wrong. When these people come, they're, they're going to come and the first initial application, they're going to check your refrigerator for a thermometer. Easy peasy, right? You can go to the store and pick up a refrigerator thermometer and get one for the freezer because they're going to check that too. They're going to make sure you have a simple, basic $9.99 first aid kit from Walmart. Simple, right? That's all you need. And they're going to make sure that you also have the little um, fire plug protectors on all of your sockets in your home. That's it. That is all they're looking for. Some states may look for a little bit more, but that is the bare minimum you would need to get started. That's the only thing you need to get started. When they come, they're just going to give you an application to fill out. You're going to fill that application out and they're going to leave you with a packet that you need to post in your home, in your daycare. And it just say that this particular facility is receiving a government grant for food program. That's it. So what you're going to do is depending on the ages of the children you keep, if your children have formula, that's OK. You're going to get reimbursed for formula, but you won't get reimbursed as much if that um, then when that child, when that baby turns into a toddler and you're actually feeding the baby food. So they do require one thing that you keep a menu of the meals that you're serving. And you sometimes have to show them the receipts from the milk you purchase. And they want to make sure that you're serving your children from the, the American uh, food pyramid. So you, they have certain things on the menu. They want you to serve meat, vegetables, and fruit. They have certain type of cereals that they want you to serve, whole grains, things of that nature. Easy peasy. But she's going to explain all of that when she comes out. And like I said, depending on the number of children you have in your home or that you're keeping, and you really don't even have to have a daycare established. You can just be keeping kids and get this money get this free check every month. And usually, say for instance, you're keeping the very minimum four kids. And usually that particular check is anywhere from four to 500 to $600 a month free grant money. The more children you keep, of course, the larger that check can get. Uh, if you're in a home daycare, most of the time that check is going to be about 1200 to $1,500 a month per child. I mean, per per provider. And so how they calculate that is they calculate a certain amount for the child's breakfast, a certain amount for the child's dinner, a lunch, and then a certain amount for the two snacks. So <clears throat> if you have children on your food program, so say for instance, you have four kids in your, your, your center. We're going to keep the number low. Say for instance, you have four kids in your center and two of your kids are after schoolers. Um, no, let's say, for instance, you have six kids and two of your kids are after schoolers and four of your children are there full time. I would put the four that's there full time on the food program and leave the two after schoolers off because with the four, you're going to get paid for breakfast, lunch and two snacks. OK, so you always want to make sure it makes sense and you're maximizing the amount of grant money you can get. All you have to do is give them a call and sign up. And how it works is say, for instance, you sign up this month, which is February. So we're in the month of February. So um, you your food program actually won't start till March <clears throat> 1. And on March 1, all you're going to do is check your children present. They do want attendance and you're just going to feed them off of a menu that you can make or your, your providers sometimes generate menus for you, especially if you're going through a third party. And uh, if you want to substitute, like I don't serve any pork in any of my centers. <clears throat> so I substitute a lot of the pork out. You just cross out, put what you're going to substitute with it and you're fine. You're good to go. So most times the, they come by maybe every three months, every four months, sometimes every five months. It just depends on who your provider is and how many children you're servicing and if they've gotten any complaints after you. So they don't really bother you a whole lot. You just have to make sure that you have in place milk and the menus when they do come. Because say, for instance, they show up one particular day unannounced and you don't have milk. 
Well, then you won't get paid anything for that particular day because you're off schedule of what you need to have there. And they're probably going to tell you, look, we're going to come back, double check you, but just make sure you buy the children milk. And it's a certain type of milk. You can't serve whole milk. It's only going to be 2% milk after they get a certain age. So they have a certain food criteria that you have to follow. Nothing really, really hard. Very easy peasy. Once you get the hang of it, it's a snatch. And so every month you send in the number of children you've had that month, how many children was absent, how many children was not there. Now, what you don't want to do is because they know better. And this is a way to get you flagged. You do not want to send in claims. They're called claims. You don't want to send in any claim that has a child that has children in your daycare present every single day for the whole month. Nobody left early. Everybody's been there. Everybody because you just want money. They're going to come and check you out more often. So always, and I think it's called a blank claim where the whole, a blanket claim where everybody's been there all the time. And you know, that's not the normal procedures of daycares. Sooner or later, one child's going to be out and somebody's going to make some breakfast because they didn't get there in time, things of that nature. So just don't, do not submit a blanket claim. However, you have to submit them. Some are electrical and some are the old fashioned way you just check off. And say, for instance, when you turn in in March, the claim for February, you will not get the check until March. So it goes from month to month. So from March 1st to the 31st of March, you won't get that check until April. So this is one of the reasons I tell you, tell you guys in my training to always call them first because it takes a minute for you to get on and then it takes a minute to process the paperwork. So you always want to go ahead and call them first because even to have them, all you need is one child. So say for instance, you call them up and you just have one child and they come and they get you signed up. That's OK, because by the time you fill out your claim, you're probably going to have six or seven children or more. It just depends. So they don't it doesn't matter if you have one child the moment you sign up for that. And again, this is grant money. It is not repayable. You do not ever have to pay this back. This is grant money for your sender. You do not. Um, and some of them now, they used to did not make you have EIN numbers. And sometimes now they make you have an EIN number. That is, let me just show you real quick. IRS.gov. Um, that's where you want to go to IRS.gov. You can actually go and get you a, a claim number. Uh, EIN number very quickly. You could do that on the the, the um, computer at your home and grab you an EIN number extremely fast. Uh, so it's nothing you have to have. Just type your information in. Just create a name, any name out the blue, and you can have an EIN number. Some of them in the recent years have started make, requiring that you have an EIN number. An EIN number is fine. It doesn't mean you have to have more than two or three kids or you have to have 25 kids. It's just stating that you're a legal entity now. And um, it is great, great money to help offset some of your food expenses for your children that you're keeping or for your home daycare or for your daycare center. So you always want to be aware of opportunities like that. Um, this grant is for everyone. It does not matter who you are. You don't have to have a certain criteria in order to get this grant. You don't have to jump through hoops. It's easy, easy money to have and get. And in each state, they have the food program. So you always want to check out the uh, children and adult food program, Google that information, call them, get in rotation, fill the information out. Those checks can be major for your income coming in every month. And again, like I said, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be a full-fledged daycare. You could be just babysitting some kids for a couple of hours and you can get this grant money. So it is free grant money out there for you. Uh, it, say, for instance, you keep kids on the weekend. You just, they hanging out at your house, some neighborhood kids get the grant money. And especially if they're over there consistently and all the time they're at your home, kids eat. This is a way that you can feed them. So if you are, you know, all the kids hang at your house, ask their moms, hey, because the parents do have to sign a form saying that their child's eating at your home. Easy peasy. Um, so 
let the parents know, hey, look, Johnny's over here all weekend long. I want to make sure he feeds them right. I've got opportunity to get some grant money in so that I can make sure they're eating very well. Um, I can make sure I'm cooking their pizzas and, you know, all that good stuff. And I want to sign them up. Is that OK? She say yes. Add them to the program. It does not matter what ages they are. But according to the age is according to the type of money you're going to get. So if they're at the age where they're getting formula and they're, they're infants, you're not going to, your rate is not going to be that high. And it, they pay like maybe three, four dollars per meal. Just depending on what meal that is, lunch is always going to be the, the biggest paying meal. So if you have a child that's not in your care doing lunchtime, whatever time that is, or dinner, dinner pays more than lunch. So say, for instance, you keep kids from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. at night. Um, dinner is going to carry the most money, then lunch, then breakfast, and then the snacks. So you'll know the order. And they always want you to align the time that you normally would be serving this stuff. So say, for instance, breakfast is at eight, lunch is at 1130, and then first snack is at three. They want to know those particular times as well. When they come and do their site visits, nine times out of 10, they're going to come at one particular time where you're serving meal. So if you you pass the 830 lunch time and you kind of feel like it's time for them to pop up, they may pop up at lunch. And a lot of times they do pop up at lunch. Usually breakfast or lunch is when they're going to come by. And just make sure that you're feeding kids on time. Like you said, just make sure the kids have the basics of milk or whatever. And like I said, the menu can be changed. You can just scratch out on the menu. Now, let me warn you this. If they happen to come by for a sneak visit and you didn't do anything, say for instance, it's um, the 16th of the month. And because we get lazy sometimes. And trust me, I'm one of those. So say, for instance, it's the 16th of the month and all month long, you have not signed one person in. You haven't, you know, you, you're, you're anticipating going back and filling those claims out before you turn them in. But it's the 16th of the month and you haven't got around to doing it yet. And they're knocking at the door. <laughs> Woo! Let me tell you what's going to happen. If that's the case and they come in and they see your claim is blank and you have not put a uh, present, you have not crossed out a meal, you haven't done anything for the whole month, you will not get paid from the 1st to the 16th, okay? So you want to make sure that that's kept up. Like if you go a day without it, the next day you want to make sure you're, you're keeping up with the attendance and have that sitting somewhere ready for them. You also want to make sure that they're going to give you a, just like a 9 by 11 piece of paper to hang in your facility or your home, just saying. And in the home, you can just throw the thing up on the refrigerator with a magnet, just saying that you're you're getting supplement for a food program. That's it. Easy, too easy, right? Too easy. And this will boost your income anywhere from 400 to 600, 800, 1200, $1,500 a month, even more if you actually have a center. Um, sometimes those checks for centers can be $5,000, $6,000, and $7,000 a month, just depending on how many children you have in your center. And let me tell you how this is based. So it doesn't matter. Um, it does matter where your location is for your center and your home. So if you're in a location, they're going to base the amount of pay you get per child based on the school in your zone. So say, for instance, you're in a school zone where the most of the percentage of the children in that home are on free or reduced lunch. Then if you're in an area like that, you're going to be in tier three, which means you're going to get the maximum. So say, for instance, you're a child care or you're keeping children in an area where most of the kids are not on free lunch. Most of the parents are above the medium of income and most of the parents, you know, they, they don't really, you know, need the free lunch. You're going to get the minimum amount. So your money may vary then, but you still would get it. It just will not be as much as if you're in an area where most of the children in that particular area are on free or reduced lunch at the closest elementary school near you. So they're going to base it by the closest elementary school that is near you, uh, what type of tier you would be as well. I hope this information helped you guys. Go ahead, sign up, get that free grant money, get that money. Have an amazing day, guys. I also want to put on here, remind you guys, go to the website, 
I have coaching sessions, I have courses, I have manuals you can purchase on how to open up and operate your own daycare flawlessly. I also have a curriculum if you're having trouble, a curriculum that I produce myself. I'm so proud of it. It's called Blah, Blah, Black Sheep. So this is an amazing curriculum. If you've been st struggling with a curriculum, or didn't know what type of curriculum, it is way, way, way cheaper than some of these crazy people. I hear one almost $1,000 for curriculum. No, ma'am, we're not doing that. Easy peasy curriculum. And I think it's actually under $300 that takes you through an entire year. It also has a resource book with it. So there's a book full of all you got to do is take photos of it and pass them out. <laughs> so guys, have an amazing day. Um, hit me up with questions. If you have any questions, go get that free grant money. Talk to you guys later.